Welcome back to Buck's Garage, where this episode I'm going to show you some easy ways to update and modernize the interior and exterior on any vehicle. And if you have a Mercedes W212, you're going to be very interested because I'm going to show you how to change your steering wheel from your OEM stock steering wheel to this. So as you know by now, I like buying older cars and once I have them, anyone that knows me can tell you that I really can't uh, leave, seem to leave them alone. So uh, one of the first things I like to do with these things is to upgrade the lighting if possible. And I start on the outside first. Uh, one of the biggest improvements in newer cars these days, in my opinion, is the lighting inside and outside. And it's something that you can do on an older car and really help out the look and feel of it and kind of update and modernize it. So let's start with the outside lighting on this car. And luckily, uh, the outside lighting on this car is in pretty good shape. Uh, the tail lights are all LED, look really nice, uh, nice and bright. I did replace the uh, license plate light lights with LED instead of the halogen bulbs. I uh, really brightened that up a little bit. The outside lights on the front of this car are in really good shape and pretty awesome. They've got the automatic headlights, uh, the headlight, uh, automatic high beams, the headlights turn with you when you turn the wheel. Uh, really nice setup and they look nice and bright. Uh, really nothing to do on the front end. You've got uh, daytime running lights that are LED already. Uh, so the only thing I did on the front end of the car is I did change out the orange reflector for clear and then I put an orange LED bulb in there. A uh, pretty cheap update and uh, really kind of helps out the front end look of the car. I think it looks a lot cleaner. Something that I think goes a long ways to modernizing the inside feel of the car is to replace all of your old bulbs with LED bulbs inside. So I've done that in the uh, roof lights here. You can see, I don't know if you can see this or not, but in the footwell lights, I've got LEDs down there. Um, any, it, just basically any LED, any light inside the interior, I replace with an LED bulb. And it just really brightens up the interior and makes it look a lot more modern. The next thing that I like to do to my cars as soon as I buy them, kind of has to do with the inside and the outside. Uh, and that is, of course, window tint. Um, I always like to tint any car that I have if it doesn't already have it. Um, I usually go a little darker than you're supposed to. Uh, don't tell anybody, I go about 20%. I've had 5% on a car before, and in my opinion, that's just a little bit too dark. It's kind of dangerous at night, kind of hard to see, especially when you're backing up, that sort of thing. So uh, I think 20% looks good on the outside, and it really makes a big difference on the inside. Kind of get a look here at my light there, and see it through the tent, really makes a big difference. Really makes the inside of the car a lot cooler and uh, just feels better, looks better. Um, some of you will tint your windshields. I don't think that's a great idea in my opinion. Um, not something I've ever tried, probably won't. But what I do is I do get a visor on the top here. Um, I think my guy charged me about 15 bucks to put this on. This one is 5% and it really makes a big difference when the sun's coming into your face when you're driving. Um, really helps out with that. Um, one other thing on this car, it does have that panoramic sunroof, but um, you can't really tell from here, but it's got a mesh cover over it. And so it's not actually a solid hard cover, it's just a mesh, and so it does let sunlight through. So um, I'm not a big fan of sunroofs in the first place. Um, I don't really like having sun coming down on top of me while I'm driving. So I had this uh, panoramic sunroof tinted 5%. So when I cut with the tint and when I close that cover, it's a lot darker in here than it was before. So uh, something to think about if you have one of these cars. Um, I find that the floor mats in older cars I buy are always pretty ragged. And uh, putting a new set of floor mats in really makes a big difference. Uh, this car came with this rubber floor mat. It's a Mercedes OEM rubber floor mat. I keep this in during the winter just to keep the carpet one a little bit nicer. But I was able to get brand new OEM carpet um, floor mats from Mercedes for about $70, $80. So it's really not too bad for the whole car and uh, really does a lot to help the car uh, feel a little bit newer and less used. Uh, one last idea that I have not done to this car yet, um, but I may in the future, is updating the seats. So um, typically with any car, there's gonna be a higher end version of that car and it'll probably have nice receipts. And a lot of times you can take the old seats out and put those higher end seats in in place and they'll bolt right in. So for this car, the higher end version was the E63 AMG, of course. And um, those seats have a little bit nicer bolstering, especially on the bottom part. Um, has all the same massaging features and everything that this seat has. 
just looks a little bit nicer and a little more sporty and supportive. Um, and you can change the color easily that way too. Um, so I am considering putting black AMG seats in this car. Um, you can find them on eBay pretty easily. And that's true for any car, um, truck, SUV that you've got. Um, may do something with the wood trim at some point, maybe wrap that or exchange it out for a silver or carbon fiber. Uh, but for now, this is where the car is at. And let's get on to the good part of how to upgrade this steering wheel from the old version to this one. About this entire project is going to be finding and buying the correct parts. So I'm gonna to try to make this as easy as I can for you. So I got my wheel from a website called carextras.com. The website looks a little bit goofy. Um, you're not quite sure where it's actually gonna come from, but you can see they have a wide selection of really nice OEM wheels. And the one I purchased is actually right here at the top. Uh, this wheel had the aluminum paddle shifters that I wanted. The buttons matched up with my car on both sides. It had the Alcantara sides, and then I was able to get it without the white at the top. They were able to give me the entire package deal, all brand new OEM parts for $876. After shipping, it was right around $900. Uh, these guys were very uh, good at communication. They were very fast in all their replies and they shipped it from London in, uh, and I got it in less than a week. So I was very happy with the entire transaction and I highly recommend buying a wheel from them if you're going to um, pursue this mod. Uh, you can also get the wheel from eBay. Uh, this is just a, a search for AMG steering wheel. Uh, this is actually the same company here. The price is a little bit lower but it does not include the airbag. So it was just easier to order from their website rather than going through eBay. Uh, you'll notice there are other uh, options available on eBay, but you're not quite sure what you're going to get. And um, the buttons on a lot of these didn't match up with what I needed. So um, I was really happy with carextras.com. The other option is CKM Car Design. They have a page for E-Class W212s, and they have quite a few aftermarket parts for the car. Uh, they have a leather wrapped uh, airbag that's really nice. Um, further down, they've got quite a few different options for steering wheels. Uh, this is pretty similar to the wheel that I have, and um, that price is without airbag, so it's actually cheaper from carextras.com. Um, they also have some other interesting steering wheels. They've got some with LED lights on top. I think that's a little bit over the top for what I was looking for. Uh, but they actually even have the brand new versions of the AMG steering wheels, and you can retrofit these into your W212 if you want to as well. I really didn't think this style fit the inside of my car very well, so I was happy with the version I got. Uh, if you don't want the AMG on the bottom and you're okay with the shorter plastic shifters, you have this option from CKM. Uh, the shifters are going to be shorter and plastic, as you can see, and then you don't get the AMG on the bottom. Um, and you get the perforated leather instead of the Alcantara and no um, stitching at the top. So a little bit plainer steering wheel, but quite a bit cheaper as you can see. So you've got quite a few options to go for. Um, I definitely recommend this wheel from CK or from carextras.com. Uh, worked out great for me. Now the next part is you need to get a switch gear for the new steering wheel. Now uh, this is where it gets a little bit difficult because you have to match all the features that your car had on it. Uh, whether you've got Distronic cruise control, uh, automatic rain sensing wipers, uh, heated steering wheel, all that sort of stuff, you have to match the switch gear to what you have in your car currently. Now CKM does actually sell the switch gear now. They didn't when I was looking for it, um, but they've got OEM part right here and they ask you to send them a picture of what you have and um, this guy knows what he's doing so I'm pretty sure he can find the right part for you if you want to go this route. Um, I made the mistake of finding one that had all the features that I needed on um, rain sensing wipers, no heated steering wheel, Distronic, all that, um, but it was actually from a GLC and so the shroud part did not fit my car. So I ended up going to my favorite OEM Mercedes parts supplier, which is buymercedespartsnow.com and I was able to find the correct switch gear. Uh, with with the um, adaptive cruise control, with the lane assist, without heated wheel, uh, which matches my car perfectly in black, and um, got the OEM part for about $300. Uh, you can see a list of fitments down here, and um, this is what would come in a later model E550. So it was worth a the gamble. These guys take returns. Uh, when I got it, um, plugged it in, it worked fine, and fits the car just fine. 
So uh, that is where I got my parts from. I would definitely recommend going that route. It worked out fine for me. Um, as you notice, the cost does get up there a little bit. So between the $900 steering wheel and then your $300 switch gear, you're looking at about $1,200. And that is the bad news of this modification is it is expensive. However, there is some good news because you can sell your old parts on eBay. You'll see there's quite a few OEM uh, steering wheel parts on here. And um, I was able to sell my old wood steering wheel for about $450. And then I got about $225 for the airbag and then another $225 for the um, switch gear. So I ended up making about $850 to $900 back on my OEM parts. So uh, overall, the mod only cost me about $300, and um, I am definitely very happy with the upgrade for that investment. So um, if you got any questions on parts, hit me up in the comments, but uh, that's how I did it, and it worked great for me. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do when you go to replace the steering wheel in your car is you want to unhook the battery, and then you want to let it sit for... 10, 15, 20 minutes to make sure that any excess power has drained out of that battery. And the reason for that is the airbag. You do not want that airbag going off in your face while you're messing with it. So uh, by draining the power in the car and having that battery unhooked, uh, you'll avoid anything going wrong with the airbag. You may be asking yourself, why would you change out a steering wheel in a car? I mean, it's just a steering wheel. It works fine. There was nothing wrong with it. But uh, my line of thinking is this is the one thing that you handle every time you get in the car and you look at it the most, uh, you feel it the most, and so it can do the most to update the interior of your car. Uh, the one that came in mind actually had a wood inlay on the top and on the bottom and then it was wrapped in leather on the sides and uh, to be honest it really didn't feel very good. It was just basically hard plastic up, up top and up bottom. and. Um, I didn't like the look of it, I didn't like the feel of it, and um, I really like this wheel. Um, yeah, you might give me some crap for having AMG on a non-AMG car, but I think it looks cool, so I'm going with it. Um, the old one had uh, much smaller um, paddle shifters, and they were plastic. Uh, these ones are taller and aluminum, and they just feel a lot better. Uh, but the main thing is the grip is just uh, bigger, um, nice leather on it, and it's got the Alcantara on the sides. Wasn't my first choice to have Alcantara because it will get dirty, uh, but you can spray this with um, a nano sp protectant spray that will keep it waterproof and keep it from getting grimy. And uh, mine's held up pretty good. So uh, let's get on with taking this thing off and we'll, uh, then I'll show you how to put it back. So first thing we're gonna do is uh, get this airbag off. And the way we do that is on the back of the steering wheel, you'll see right here there's a little indent in the case in the uh, covering on the steering wheel and uh, so you need to get a little tool i use a little um, allen key and stick it in that hole and you'll see look there it pops in and then you just push you got to kind of feel it around and get to the right spot there it is and see that popped that side of the airbag loose and now you got a gap there so then you just do the same on the other side and out it comes. Okay, so now we've got it released from the back. We're gonna pull this airbag out and there will be a plug on the back of it. And that is plugged into your steering wheel here. Just a couple of little tabs and that should pop out. Okay, that's our airbag off. So then our next piece, we'll set that aside, will be to remove this large bolt in the middle here. Okay, so this is gonna be one of those do as I say, not as I do sort of situations. This bolt is a 10 millimeter hex, and I don't have one that fits on a breaker bar, but I do have this 10 millimeter hex key, so I'm gonna put that in, and then I'm gonna grab my makeshift breaker bar with the hole in the end. Again, I would not recommend this. It's really not the right way to do it, but sometimes you gotta just make do with what you have. Start working that out. Again, a ratchet extension would be a lot better. But I'm not a professional, but it should just pop right off like that. Nice and easy. And then you've got one more plug on your clock spring back here. And there you have it. 
one AMG wheel or stock wheel removed. You do have to upgrade this setup in this car in order to run this new wheel. You'll notice my shifter is different. Uh, my uh, controls over here are different. This whole setup has to be changed to work with this new wheel because the old one will not work. Uh, one nice benefit about that is your turn signal will now be in the right spot. On the old one, it was down here. The cruise control was up here. All my other cars, it's up here. And so it was always confusing to, I was always hitting the wrong deal in this car until I upgraded this piece. And now the turn signal is up where it should be. So to get this out, it just slides right out. Um, you've got this shroud on the back, that you gotta get loose. And it's just plastic clips come off pretty easily, so now it's loose. And then this guy just slides right off, like so. And then he's got one clip in the back. Get that wiring harness off. And there it is, nice and easy. Now, when you go to replace this, uh, make sure that you pay close attention to how that's gonna fit, because they are different from car to car, even though the front of it looks exactly the same. Okay, so reinstallation is just gonna be the opposite of what we just did. Okay, now I've got the battery hooked back up and last step is just to start the car up and make sure everything's working right. So we're looking for warnings on the dash, we're making sure that our power still works here, making sure our steering wheel controls work, the volume up and down. Speech data is working. It's like our phone's working. Pause that. Our menu's all working. Everything's fine. So you will know if you've got the wrong uh, switch gear in here because the um, the car will freak out when you turn it on. I, when I tried to do it with the wrong switch gear, I just was figured I'd leave this shroud alone and see if I could get it to work. Um, the car was throwing all kinds of warnings, um, everything was going wrong on it, so um, definitely um, was the wrong switch gear. Once I got the right one, put this in, everything worked fine. Um, you did probably notice when I started the car that the active lane keep assist does not work anymore. Uh, this steering wheel is actually capable of doing the active uh, lane keep control. It's got the vibrator in it, um, but for some reason it just doesn't work in this car. Um, they've changed the communication protocol somehow. So even though this wheel is capable of doing it, it will not work in this car. Um, so I'm gonna have that coded out at some point. I really didn't like that feature anyway. And um, I was okay with, the, uh, with losing it to upgrade to this wheel. But uh, be aware that if you're a big fan of the um, lane keep assist, it's not gonna work anymore with this wheel. Okay, that about wraps it up as far as uh, interior upgrades on this car. I hope that gave you some ideas to use on your older car. Um, there are ways to keep these older cars feeling a little bit nicer and a little bit newer than they are. Um, and if you've got a W212 and you're looking at the steering wheel upgrade, I hope that helped you with that little project. If you've got questions, hit me up in the comments. Um, it's a nice upgrade, really worth doing in my opinion. Um, I do have some fun news on this car. I am finally going to order some wheels and tires for it. So stay tuned for that. But for now, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. I'm so cool, I'm gonna tell people what to do on YouTube. Didn't even get the damn wheel on straight. <sighs> nice.